Hello guys. So here we have a PS Vita dev kit. Now this dev kit is running. Get this. It is running firmware. 3.71.0.11 So, you're probably wondering, how will I get here? After all, the Gatus Yeats dev kit firmware is 3.68 Well, as it turns out Um, let's just, 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 just go back So, I get a comment on my YouTube channel Of someone trying to activate their dev kit But, this one's different He says he's running 3.71 and he needs a um, he needs to downgrade. Now he was about to say, "Oh, you can use neighborhood to downgrade," but then I realized, wait, no, that's a bad idea. I should at least dump the firmware for the files in the firmware first, right? And so that, that so I was like, "Okay, no, don't don't downgrade. Just just let me let me get an expert on there to dump the files, right?" And then what I was thinking, like I my, I was just thinking to myself, and I realized, wait a minute. When you run an update, it copies it to UE0, right, and creates this PSP2 update file and puts the, file, puts the update file into UE0, PSP2 update, PSP updates.pup, right? So, and I thought, okay, well, after the update completes, the update will delete the file. And I was thinking, wait, it just deletes the file, right? Like, couldn't I just, like, dump the partition raw and, like, open it in a hex editor and, like, maybe, like, see the update file still there? Well, no. As it turns out, you cannot because the Sony updater actually overwrites the file after after it deletes it. But wait, wait a minute. It overwrites it after it deletes it. Then the subsequent writes are just going to return an SCIOE invalid error, so it just won't do anything. And <laughs> sure enough, it doesn't do anything. Um, I dumped the partition off my dev kit just to see if it would work. And sure enough, the update file I used to get to 3.6c was still there. So that's pretty cool. So after I did that, after I realized that would work, I then messaged this person and said, Hey, I want to get the pop file for 3.71. Um, <laughs> and here's how we're going to do it. So um, first problem that I've come was that the dev kit was not activated, and you can't activate without, without 3.60, right? Well, no, there's actually a very old method to activate dev kits that doesn't involve any hacks, and that is simply to open up, pop out the CP battery, the CP like, battery that keeps the clock running, and then put it back in, close the dev kit up, um, turn off the internet on your PC, set your PC's clock back to like 2015 or whatever, and then just like um, open neighborhood and connect the feeder, connect the dev kit to your PC, and then um, power it on. And it will basically neighborhood will sync the time your PC has with your dev kit. Except you can control what that time is, so you can just say, oh yeah, the time is like you know first of January 2015, and now oh wow, I'm activated. So yeah, that's a that's a thing you could do. So that's what we did. We um. He actually just needed to open up the bat open the dev kit, pop up the battery, put it back in, and then all of a sudden his dev kit was activated. He didn't need to do the extra staff of neighborhood for some reason. Um, so then we tried installing Hencore and running it, and Hencore failed. It just it just screwed an error message once it tried to open. And I, I kind of was expecting this because the same thing happens on um, the web exploits with a activated dev kit. But, so I, so I downloaded the source code for, um, Encore, finally worked out how to build it, and change the, um, off ID of the bootstrap application, and set G homebrew decrypts to one always, you know, all the stuff you do to make it work on the web, and it still didn't work, um, the app opened, but it was just a black screen, and I, I was stuck on this for a while, I, um, I tried modifying the bootstrapper to just install Hankaku and then Yeev. Turns out it doesn't have write permissions, so it can't write the updated Hankaku like files. And so I, I eventually just gave up and said, alright, this payload.c thing, it runs in kernel mode. So let's just let's just copy the code to dump the partition into payload.c and compile it that way. <laughs> I did, and then um and then we ran it, and then of course it started dumping. Um, and it dumped the file to UD0 IMG. Um, and, you know, I, I make it sound like this is very easy. It actually took, it was a pain in the ass to work out, get this to work. It took me, like, until, like, 1am in the morning, um, 
to finally get a build of it that actually worked. But <laughs> anyway, we, we got the file, right? We got the user IMG. So then I copied it. So then I thought, okay, put the memory card into another video that you can, um, it's already hacked, and just get the file off. Um, and so that's what he did. And of course, you got the file off because you know you just take memory card out, put it in this video, easy, right? Um, and so then he sent me the file, and I opened it in a hex editor and search for the four most important editors in the in the world, SCEUF. And sure enough, there was an update file sitting there on the partition that wasn't removed. So I thought, okay, great. Now I need to figure out how to you know extract this. Maybe the file's fragmented in some way, you know. I have, to, I have to work all that out now. Um, and so first I sent the file to, um, I sent the UD0 IMG to Matthew who has become interested in the project at this point. Um, but, um, and then while I was still writing a power server to try to dump out the, um, each, each SPKG on the pop file, right, um, to like, see how big it is, uh, Matthew sent me the extracted pop file and I was like, oh, so he, he did it before me, I, before I had the chance. Um, but I could have done it, but he, he, he just, he was just fast, so, so, I, I said, okay, well, does this update work? And I said, well, why don't you try and install it? I'm like, oh yeah, good idea. So, um, but we, there was one thing we didn't know, is that is, it can 3.71 even downgrade back to 3.60. Um, so I got the person who had the 3.71 dev kit to try downgrade, um, and it worked. So then I was like, okay, now I'm comfortable to try and install it on my dev kit, because I know I'll be able to go back if it works. And it started verifying the pop, and then it got the verify stage two, and then it started installing. And I was like, ah, the pop verified. That means it's the exact right file that was used to update his kit. So we have the exact pop that was used to install 3.71, and we can now install 3.71 on any dev kit, even if it's not hacked. You can do whatever. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'll have the link to the pop file in the description. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.